So I think that's it, we're live. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. It's Eve Oxbury here, editor of Professional Beauty, and I'm um, really happy today to be joined by Kerry Ann Angus. Now, um, on today's webinar, it's actually sponsored by Italwax, and we'll be popping a link to their page in the chat here on the webinar platform, and also over on our Facebook page if you want to uh, give them a little visit and see what they do. Um, but I should make it clear that Italwax hasn't influenced the content of the webinar today. It's completely independent, because we're very excited to have with us Kerry Ann Angus, and Kerry is the owner of Peaches Salons up in Scotland, uh, in Glasgow and Paul Kirk, uh, also the Peaches Academy, and she's also um, ambassador for Perrin Rigo in Scotland. So Kerry is going to be talking to us about, well, an in-depth session really on male waxing, covering the most popular treatments um, and offering some common troubleshooting techniques. So hi Kerry, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, 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 oh, sorry. Go on. No, it's fine. I just wanted to warn everybody that this might not be as professional as the others because I have got uh, kids and dogs that Eve experienced earlier. Yeah, uh, so, war word of warning, they might run in. Well, I'm hoping there's a, a guest appearance from one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's so hard at the moment. We're all expected to be completely professional at all times whilst also juggling home lives, which is very hard. I'm just thinking at least I'm out of my pyjamas. So you got you got me in the full shebang earlier. So exactly. it's great to make progress. A reason to put the full makeup on and, and get in front exactly. of the camera. <laughs> Keep Fab. So, um, Kerry, I'm going to hand straight over to you um, to start the presentation. Let me just get it up here, um, and I'm going to turn off my camera and microphone so that so that Kerry can get started. Thank you. Hello, guys. Okay, so. I have put together some slides just to let you, um, just to give you a little bit more information on male waxing and how we approach it in the salon. Um, we have been waxing now, we, we opened up and we offered male waxing from the very beginning. Um, but it seems to be something that, that is still quite a daunting thought for a lot of therapists. Um, new therapists especially um, or just people like the therapists who haven't ever uh, offered male waxing so hopefully I can answer some questions towards the end and I'm just going to um, blather on about this kind of stuff so if I can get this working which I should be able to um, okay so one of the the main things for me um, is the fact that we try and treat guys just like we treat girls um, and for us that's offering them exactly what we offer the females. Um, intimate waxing, um, we, we offer them all waxing, we offer um, we offer, sorry, I just got caught somebody saying something about sound there. I need to like maybe not look at the comments. Um, we offer uh, dermaplaning and laser as well in the salons um, with the hope to bring in new treatments now that we have rebranded. Um, we were initially just a wax bar um, and we just did waxing and we basically grew from zero to where we are today, just offering waxing. And it's only in the last year, where we've, um, year and a half maybe, where we've started to introduce other things like laser hair removal, um, at, like dermaplaning, et cetera. Um, and we always offered the guys that as well. Um, as for waxing, I would like you to consider um, your pricing. So, something actually that my manager had reminded me of so when I was telling her about this other day um, I had mentioned it being about male waxing and I'm kind of like when you've not got a demo there uh, to kind of you know we're very hands-on as therapists and and when you haven't got a demo there what else do you talk about when it comes to male waxing other than the bits that you can wax and Andy and Sam, if you had seen the Intimate Wax uh, webinar the other the other day, I think it's last week, um, they touched on everything really. And you can, with everything that they said, it's not just about Intimate Waxing, it's just about waxing as well. So uh, thanks for making my job harder, Andy. Um, so I have just written up things about um, the pricing. 
um, marketing uh, and we'll go through that. So pricing your treatments. So we have always offered um, we have always offered the exact same price at, at first when we, we when we first opened it, it was a little bit more expensive for a meal wax. And I was under the impression, you know, it, it's more training and, and it's a more specialised uh, treatment. However, as time went on, I realised that it's not. And it kind of went against what I believed in and that everybody is just a body. Um, and so one of the best things that we did was bring all the prices that are, are of similar treatment to the same price. Uh, intimate waxing being the easiest one to um, demonstrate on that. So intimate waxing for males, you have a male Brazilian, you have a female Brazilian, they're the same price. The only time that our prices differ is if you get uh, one of our uh, senior therapists to see one of the cadet therapists and that's where the, the treatment price will only differ but it will not differ for male or female. Um, there's a lot to be said for pricing um, and I think a lot of people, they're, they've, they've been told through the years um, that, you know, guys have got more hair, they've got a bigger body and, and actually not all of them do. So it just made sense for us to bring down um, the price and offer the same. So a really good way as well to price your treatments uh, would be to look at your overheads and this is actually the best time to do it. Um, we cannot do treatments and we cannot use the excuse of being so busy with the salon stuff right now. Um, you know, we have no excuse not to be sitting and looking at the figures, looking at how much it costs per day to run your salon um, and, you know, how much does it cost per day when you have got staff in and when you don't have staff in and average that. Have a look at how much you actually need to bring in before you break even and then before you take your own wage. Um, and it takes a while, especially when you are like me and hate spreadsheets um, and you just like drawing doodles, writing scribbles and doing things with hands, you know. So, yeah, um, it is tough, but actually right now I'm learning a lot of new things and I've, I've got a lot more patience for things like that. So um, working things out, you know, and the cost of your overheads changes all the time. So right now, while everything has stopped, um, it's a great idea to get your current costs for your overheads and then start to price on that and taking into consideration VAT and, and tax, etc. Um, who knows what VAT will be put up to after lockdown, after we've been giving out all these uh, lovely uh, freebies, shall I say. Um, so you're always, uh, I've always given the advice to price uh, your treatments the same or ever so slightly less than the most expensive in your area. Um, so I would say that the, the most expensive or the second most expensive um, in your area and, and price the exact same as them. It means that you're not getting into too much of a uh, price and more. And also it means that you are not underselling yourself as well. Because at the end of the day, you know, waxing and good waxing is down to good training. It's down to experience and it's down to your time that you're putting into it. So um, that's around about it for the pricing. Um, then you've got to ask yourself, what does your marketing say to the guys? So the guys, you know, that are going into the salons that have got the nail bars at the, the, um, the waiting area, and you girls are all gossiping and it's all fluffiness and there's pink fluff flying everywhere. Um, it's not going to make all the guys feel that comfortable. Uh, some will be fine. Some will be absolutely fine. But yeah, what does your marketing say to guys? And when I say marketing, I don't just mean like flyers and, you know, your, your social media posts. Your marketing is everything that people can see 
or hear about your salon. So your marketing is your decor, your marketing is your, you know, what other people are saying, the word of mouth is everything. So have a look um, and, and have a look around your salon and just see how you can neutralize it, but in a really nice way, obviously, because you still want the decor to be nice. And you can still have it pretty. I just what I, I mean is is try and neutralise certain areas so that you are being a little bit more inviting to the guys who are maybe really apprehensive about coming into beauty salons because guys actually do really enjoy having treatments done and being groomed and feeling the way that we feel when we go and get our hair done or, or makeup done, all the the treatments that we like that we so miss. <laughs> Right now. Um, so guys love that as well. So what is your salon saying? Is it just talking to, to the girls? Um see, you know, have a look around and see how you can welcome the guys in as well. Um I had written here, you know, the is there a space where the guys can feel safe? Is there like a different space for the guys? That they maybe are away from the nail bar and the the gossip queens and um and about new, again like new, just neutralizing your, your decor a little bit or even just in the treatment rooms uh when you're waxing we always uh we always advise our, our salons that we coach and that we train to have a waxing room if you can if you've got the space there um, and have it as clinical looking as you can so really clean wipeable surfaces the smell of like you know the disinfectant and and you need to see as well so it needs to be bright so these rooms that are made uh, and you've got all your candles and you've got the really nice smell and um, incense etc is amazing um but it's not functional and it's it's got a different feel to it therefore you know when you're going in for waxing you want it to be clean obviously clean and you want to feel smell your, your senses just want to to tell you this place is safe and this place is clean so have a think about if you have the space for a waxing room um maybe changing that up a little bit um and then the next thing um is to have a little think about what platform you would find the men on not tender uh what where would you find your guys so at the first point of call if you have 95 to 100 percent of female clients is ask them who they're with are they with a guy and if they are would they bring the guy um and and you know that's the first place the easiest place and the cheapest place to get guys in the door and get them in comfortably as well because they're going to come in with somebody that they know especially if you were to um you know have an offer on that for them where if they you know if the they brought their man in they could get something for happy so i don't know you can you you're, you're good at your own offers so you should know you know what you can and cannot discount um maybe it's like a trial price or something like that but yeah get the partners in get the pals in um and then there's almost, almost that barrier has been broken down already if somebody is bringing their guy in because the the guy doesn't need to sit there themselves the he's kind of being coaxed into it a little bit but also the barrier of trust is already set it's just already down because you have to earn trust from a brand new guy who's never experienced your salon you have to earn his trust and that's tough once you've got it you've got it so that's one of my uh, tips for getting the guys in if you don't have very many or any uh, males in is go to the people that you've got already and get them to do the marketing for you um and maybe just like ease them in a little bit maybe not getting them straight in for the uh, the brazilians however i know that a lot of uh, females would love to get their men right in there but maybe getting them in for you know the facial grooming uh, and it could be that you have a facial grooming package uh, where it's nostrils ears um, we do this little bit up here for guys as well and you can sometimes do under here and um, just along the neck just to tidy up um, where the beard starts so you know 
I'm kind of look, I'm actually looking at the guy that's on the slide now. On, that was a really good uh, example because you could really kind of straighten his beard up a little bit. I'm sure he's got some ear hair in there uh, and get the old nostrils sorted. And then, of course, the boy brow. Um, so, yeah, you could just do full face packages. Um, you could coax them into, you know, getting one area and then trying another one for free. There's loads of stuff that you can do for the guys. Um, I'm on edge because my dog's on the move now. I'm like, oh my God, where is she going? Where is she going to bark at? Mm -hmm. uh, so men as well, they tend to be loyal. So once you've got them, you've got them. Uh, it's pretty easy to keep the guys. Uh, I think it's because they don't want to uh, go to the hassle of trying other salons and going through all that again. It's like... Um, it would probably be like breaking up with somebody. Um, so, that, you know, once you've got them, you've got them. And they listen as well. So I find that our male clients are actually really good at home care. So they're really good and really easy to eat, retail to. Um, they, they just tend to get their treatment done. They're like, in their head, they're kind of going, okay, thank God that's done. And I'm like, right, okay, you need this, 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 and this is what you do. And I want to see improvement when you're coming back. If you don't do this, this happens. And, you know, they'll just be like, I'll take it all. And then they walk away with it all. And, you know, they come back four or five weeks later and they've done everything to the T, everything. Whereas the females, as soon as they rock up and get their pants off, you're like, you have not been scrubbing. And they're like, yeah, no. And they've got six of your products at home and they don't use any. So, and they're all at a date and all that. So, yeah, the guys are actually really easy to retail to and they listen to you. Um, so, they do tend to be loyal. Uh, when you're sending your marketing emails, so now is the time to write all your marketing emails. Um, so, you could, you could technically write your emails for the year ahead. And now I want you to try and think about incorporating the guys and having their own emails. So if you've got a system like Forest, then it's really easy to um, categorise who you're sending out your emails to. Um, even MailChimp, etc. All, all the good systems will do it. So you don't need Forest, but you, you need a good system, a good email marketing system. And get the guys and get just the guys and start speaking to the guys like the guys would speak to the guys um, I, and you know and change your marketing around and speak to them give them offers that is going to just be attractive to them um, and so have a little think about how you can market and how you can hone in on just the men just the girls um, and so it, it's not just a blanket email that's going out in the hope that you get as many people as you can. Because in reality, if you look at the, the figures and if you look at the stats on what you get in return for, from an email, uh, from a marketing email, is it that big that you can't just make the, a little bit more effort in, in categorising? Um, and then I would say have a look at your website and... Once you've had a look at your website, again, now's the time to make the changes. Um, web guys should be working. Uh, I know that mine's, uh, it's not a guy, it's a girl, but I know that she is. Um, so have a look at your website and see what changes you can make. And again, make your website a little bit more gender neutral um, and a little bit more welcoming for men um, because it's going to work out for the guys who are sitting on Google, looking at all your, your reviews, you know, get some reviews from guys as well. That's a really, really good way. If you can get a guy to, to get a, a Google review or, you know, the, the forest, if you have, again, I mentioned forest because we have it, but the, the, the system there, um, when somebody sends a review to you, it just has the first name. But then you can upload that into Facebook, onto Google, etc. So, you know, it's a really handy tool to have. It's it needs to be maximised. You need to be using it to its maximum capacity, and you really need to be sharing the guys' reviews um, and asking for them. If they're not giving them, ask for them because they will. Um, if you ask them to their face and give the puppy eyes. So then, um, that's a little bit of the marketing for the guys. 
Um, it's just about remembering them, and it's just about um, probably separating them slightly. I know that we're in a in a an era of everybody's the same, and and but I just think that it's very much worth uh, changing up your marketing just a little bit for that. Oh, I thought it wasn't going to work there. Um, so back to the facial waxing. Um, there is more to just the boy brow, and I'm not going to say that word. I'm just going to let you have a think about what it could be. Lots of words out there that start with B. Um, so it's not just about the boy brow. Are the guys getting treated as well? So we're not just talking about waxing. And I know that I came on to talk about the male waxing. But also think about other things that they can have that the girls are having as well. So our most common for guys is either the intimate wax or you've got your back wax and then you've got the facial wax. Everything else, it starts to fall in, but it's not as popular unless it's the summer, etc. I mean, this summer, I doubt we're going to see one single back wax. I think it'll be winter for the time for back waxing uh, and we won't be waxing backs. So the for me it's all about you know let that groomed look is is really in just now. So the guys are going to barbers, but barbers have upped their game. Like they they are they are making so much more effort. You used to have to go to a hairdressers to get like as a guy to get the hairstyle that you now get in barbers. Um, and so you know the groomed look is it's up there. It's important to guys. So this then is great for waxers, for people who are offering the male waxing, because it's going to be one of the easiest waxing packages or, or uh, treatments that you can um, that you can offer the guys. Um, you can also hairdresser hairdressers barbers. I recently trained a, a, a barbers on the. Um, nostril waxes etc and it was just the facial waxing but it just leaves it um nice and sharp you know and it and all i'm going to say is please don't stick a, a cotton bud up somebody's nose with wax on it <laughs> and i've seen it so many times so if you're going to do it do it right um and well you know if you're if you're in a salon then at least you can offer the the nice proper treatment uh, of nostril waxing etc so as i said before we like to sharpen up this line for guys guys quite like this kind of sharp and there's some guys who have a lot of hair down here in the neck as well um guys don't really tend to see their ears they don't look that far um but they do have it right here right here you know trimming the eyebrows and then just giving this little middle bit uh, a go over um we do some training on the boy brow um, because it's very different and it's it's hard when you're a therapist when you're a trained therapist to really not make brows look you know really sharp and clean and and it's not what guys are after most of the time so but it is more to it when you're that close to a guy's face you can then see their skin and if you offer skincare, then that is a moment to say, what are you using on your skin? Because I can see this, this and this, and I can improve that with this. So whether it's treatment or product, you know, as I said, guys are easy to sell products to because you can go in and they tell you tell them how to use it, they'll use it. So the for me, it's the perfect opportunity. They're there. The trust is, is now there as well. So whatever you say to them, they're probably going to take heed. Um, so it is a little bit more than waxing the, the bits. Um, and there is more scope for guys to spend more time in your salon um, through you upselling and upgrading their treatments. And just making them feel really welcome and making sure that they know that it's normal as well and there isn't this big deal made about any guy that walks in the salon um so there's that as well there's there's got to be that ease when guys come in and there's got to you know guys will be like do guys get that and of course they do yeah and that's it that's all they need to know um and and they should listen 
Next thing I'm going to talk about is horror stories. So if you have experience uh, in college, I mean, I'm sure that everybody on this webinar has heard horror stories and we've all heard horror stories with Watson. And then there's the horror stories that you hear about guys. So as girls especially, um, I see a lot of new therapists telling me stories that they've heard that their sisters, aunties, uncles, niece told them and it was about somebody that they knew and it was about a guy and he was dead creepy and he did this and he did that and all I'm going to say to this is yes it does happen it also happens with girls girls can be just as bad as guys and also if it hasn't happened directly to you then don't expect it to because it's the the for the amount of um creepy people <laughs> I'm trying to really be careful what I say here because anybody that knows me knows I swear a lot um, and I'm just trying to be very careful. Um, but the, the amount of people who have an al alternate motive when they come in for a wax or a treatment, you know, it could be a massage, etc. It's very, very small. Most people, if not all, come in for the treatment. Um, but there just seems to be this massive stigma and poor guys are getting it, you know, that it's such a shame because, you know, this one guy has, has <laughs> that has basically made it really difficult for guys to, to be thought of as okay to treat. And so all I would say, if you are fresh in the industry, or if that is one of your fears, um, that you know, we have been waxing and only waxing mostly bits, you know, mostly intimate. We have been doing that for years now. And I can honestly say that anybody that has come in, if they have tried to be anything other than professional back to us, it's been that mild that the girls have been able to deal with it. And I've been able to deal with it if it's happened to me. But it has been very, I mean one or two guys it's a minute percentage of your clients so you know that's I, I would say you know the horror stories might be true but they might not be and it doesn't mean that it's going to happen to you either so just make sure that you're safe but also make sure that you're safe with girls as well because uh, as i said they can be just as bad uh, so yeah and then i am going to now I can't believe I'm pretty much on time. Uh, usually it's either one end of the scale or another where I have like finished a half hour talk in 10 minutes or uh, I roll on. But I think I'm finished and ready for questions. So I hope you guys got something from it. I hope I didn't just um, ramble on. Oh, cue the, the child. So I think he's going to come back on. Uh, and then we're going to get through questions, but please excuse my child. Yep, he's coming in. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks so much, Kerry. I'm just going to switch us back to this way so you can see us both. There's been quite a lot of questions coming in as we've gone along. So if anyone else does... I'm trying to look at them. I'm like, don't... I know. It's <laughs> just keep an eye on everything at once. But yeah, it's, I mean, we've got loads of people who um, joined us so far on the webinar platform, so there's lots of questions, which is great. But if anyone else does have any, now's the time to type them in the little chat box and we will try to get through them all. But yeah, um, if we can kick off then, we've got a question here. Um, yeah, do you have as many male clients as female clients in the salon? What is your split like, I suppose, and how have you, how have you managed that? Uh, our split is around about a quarter. So as there is a big difference, there still is a big difference. Um, and it we we probably have more male intimate waxes than we do any other treatment as well so from the males from, from the entire clientele it's about a quarter and then from the males alone that would be i would say about 90 percent of, of the males are in for their their intimate okay interesting and is that growing at, at your salon? are you seeing the male yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it grows very slow we have been open since well the salons have been open since 2013 um peaches has been going since 2011 
Um, but it has always been a much, much smaller percentage. Um, but that has grown. It grew. It's basically grown from when it first started out, it was around about 3%. And then in the first year, it went up to about 7%. And now it's, it's a lot more. Fantastic. And um, we've got another question from Ellie Walker. What mail packages do you offer and which are your best selling? So do you package waxing up with other things or do you offer different We've only recently up? started to package waxing um, and literally in the last few months. Uh, we only ever, we always just found that people want what the only and the only th time that we would maybe pack it is the face. Um, so that would be the ears, nostril, uh, the neck, the cheek. Um, and the brow, and we could then package that as the, the facial grooming package, you know. Um, but guys tend to pick and choose, so we actually break down the treatments rather than put them together. Where guys can get um, maybe just the shoulders or shoulder on top of the chest, full chest, abdomen. It just depends because it tends to grow so differently for for all guys that they they almost have to spot spot wax some of them so rather than putting packages all together i would say break it down even more if that makes sense yeah and they might it, it might be that people will book in for the smaller treatments but you know dotted around the body excellent thank you and another question we've had is what aftercare products do you sell to your male clients does that offer between male and female it doesn't differ at all, no. So our aftercare products um, are Cerapel, Perinigo, uh, and Telgo. We use Telgo products as well. Uh, we love the Bio Depot. That's one of our favourites. Um, it's one of the, the team's favourites as well, the Bio Depot. Um, and that's really good for redu re reducing hair growth. Um, we, it depends what we need, you know. we That's our, our go-to for the, the after waxing, especially because it needs something um, guys tend to need something quite active, with, you know, with an active ingredient, especially if they're not used to waxing, just because the the reaction of the wax um, afterwards is quite heavy for guys. Unfortunately, they can get quite sporty and things. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got a bit of rough, if no, uh, the bit of rough uh, washcloth, and we have rough stuff, and then finally we have aloe clear. So that are, that's the only um, aftercare products that we use in the salon. Fantastic. Um, one other question we've had is, do you use hot wax when waxing the male facial areas? Yes, we do. Easy one. Probably, yeah. <laughs> it would just probably be, I, I don't, I can't see any of the girls. Sometimes there's a preference um, with certain areas of the body, depending on who you get in the team. But for male faces, just for the nature of, you know, the, the hair follicles and the hair has been a lot thicker, uh, we would use hot wax. Fantastic. And um, another question is um, from Ellie Walker again. I think I'm a mobile therapist. Any advice on products that suit me on the go? So I suppose perhaps putting together a capsule kit or uh, what are the key, the key types of product to get if you're, if you're mobile? So I would definitely the roller waxes. You can actually get little um for waxing because obviously waxing. I used to be a mobile therapist as well, and I, I have stories of wax pots trying to get wax off the boot of my car, like the carpets. And, oh God, um, but I would say roller wax, and you can get little um charging units that you can actually keep the wax uh, warm as you're driving. Um, so and it's I don't think the charging units are anything to do with the wax it's uh, as such, but um, it just means that then you can it's almost like a little mini generator. Um, but I would definitely um, recommend roller wax, and then your product wise, I think the easiest thing to travel with would be um, any of the range. I would say if it's male waxing that you're doing, then rough uh, a bit of rough. The the cloth is really popular for guys. And it's just because they can get the backs and stuff like that with it as well. Um, and yeah, I would say, I actually would say any of the, the uh, aftercare products that we have are easy to, to transport. So, but roller wax for sure uh, for the treatments. Excellent, thank you. Um, another question we have from Jennifer Murray here. We use Cerapil hot wax and strip wax currently. Do you have any recommendations for nostril and ear waxing? She said her current brand says it's not suitable for nostrils. 
are there any yeah particular types of wax or particular brands you might recommend? What was that not suitable for? Um, she says our wax Euro Blonde says it's not suitable for nostrils. Uh, I would use home or crystalline. So we we do use um, Euro Blonde. It depends how you're doing the nostril as well. So there there is a way you that a way that you can put the spatula kind of up the nostril and the spatula's hanging out. Um, and I, we don't really advise that for nostril waxing. We kind of go across the way, or you can just, it's really difficult to do with your hands and no wax. <laughs> um, but yeah, we would just home or uh, crystalline. Bab, thank you. Um, another question from Ben here. Does there tend to be an age range of male waxing and have you seen that change? Okay, so when I first started out um, in the salon, so you're talking now 10 years ago, um, it was all middle-aged men, married middle-aged men, and they used to get, you know, they were they were getting full Brazilian. Whereas now, I would say in the last couple of years, the age is coming down, they're getting a little bit younger. Um, yeah, I'd say maybe in the last three years, they're, they're starting to get a little bit younger now. And when I say younger, like in their 30s, so yeah. the, the very young men come in so much well, there's men in um i've had a couple but not a lot actually not a lot i suppose that's probably contrary to some people's opinion because you think of all well, these young guys that you see on love island and they're absolutely just... and you think that they're wax they are not because the close-ups that you see you can tell they're shaved right. and badly but <laughs> also as well it, it depends on what area you're from so the london statistics for male waxing are, are so different from even from Glasgow, you know, although Glasgow is said to be very light London, it's actually not. The, the demographics are completely different, uh, especially when you, you look into things like male waxing. Um, so, yeah, the, it depends where you're from. It really does. Sure. Yeah. So that's going to very massively. Yeah. And um, I've got another question from Sandra here. I'm struggling to get males in. Would love to get more as they're extremely loyal. Any advice? I, mean, I think, you, yeah, you did give us some tips during the webinar, but any other kind of advice for building up that male client base? Yeah, I would say uh, the first thing that I would say is ask your female clients, you know, if, if that is all that you've got right now, ask them who, 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 they, who do they know that they would be able to bring in for, and if it's not for waxing, if it's for, you know, a facial or some, some sort of skincare, massage, whatever it is, um, before you're getting the, the gel polish on them, you know, you can you can ease them in gently with something that you, you know that they'll like. Um, and if it's a kind of package deal where the, the person relies on the guy to, to come in for the, the deal, if you like, um, then it's it's going to entice them a little bit more and, and kind of obviously make them commit in that way. Excellent. Thank you. Um, another question about pricing. Um, got a question about what types of wax are good for males and how much do you charge them? So, yeah, how's your kind of pricing structure and does that differ between men um, So we use, it mainly for men, it would be home that we use, um, which is Cerapel. And we are, our intimate waxing starts at $38.50 um, and it goes right up to $48.50, I think. Um, might be 52 it's terrible, I should know. <laughs> but if you want one of the managers, it's because I don't like in the salons anymore. But yeah, we're, we're up, we're 38 starting price and that's the cadets. Um, and then you'll, you'll go right up to, you know, kind of nearly £50 for an intimate wax. And that's with, if, um, that's with like one of the managers who are the, the kind of head, the head therapists, if you like. Excellent. Does that vary a lot between um, your male and female intimate waxing prices or do you keep them fairly similar? Exact same, exact same, yeah. Excellent. And um, one other question we've had is, um, what's your favourite wax technique? Wax technique? <laughs> um, okay, so, the, well, my favourite wax would be for hot wax. Um, it, it, it would, that's a hard one. I like Euroblonde because it, it does everything, everywhere, everybody. You know, I can have a pot of Euroblonde and it doesn't matter that a guy goes in because it still does the same job if you're, you know, if you're using the, the right technique for it. Um, but technique is is obviously our way of waxing, <laughs> which you need to come to us to learn. <laughs> um, one other qu a question we've had is, um, 
Do you prefer hot or strip wax for males and does it depend on the area? Yes. I would use a combination actually on most areas. So I would use hot wax entirely for the face. Um, however, you know, if a guy can get away with strip in the middle of the brows, then, then we would do it. But um, the only place that we wouldn't combi wax would be the intimate area. So we would use uh, only hot wax for intimate uh, ever on guys, on girls, on anybody. Um, and the, uh, we would use a combination of both. Uh, for every other area even the legs you know when you get to the inside of the the thighs we tend to use um hot wax and then we'll use strip in the rest of the legs so um so yeah we would combination it and i wouldn't be scared to use uh, both waxes um for for the different areas of that one area that you're waxing Excellent. Makes sense. Thank you. Um, interesting question here from Casey Hart. How long would you say that it took for you to get the hang of male waxing? And what difficulties did you find um, in terms of the differences between male and female? So it was all in my head. Preconceived, you know, thoughts and feelings about male waxing, male intimate waxing. Um, that when I first opened my doors in 2010, I was all set up. I was really... Um, I thought I was really clever and really advanced and, and had a online booking, one of the very first uh, salons, I think, to have online booking. I was there myself, didn't have any staff, and the first person to book in was a 40-something-year-old guy. And I will admit now that I absolutely bricked it. <laughs> I was just like, I've forgotten what to do. <laughs> and I hadn't long uh, done like refresher training for male waxing because uh, I thought I need to get into you know I need to do more um, but the best thing to do is just to do it and it's just not to really worry it is as I said before a body is just a body and if you think about female waxing female intimate waxing and how different each female is when you wax her it's just the same as guys it's just slightly different looking that's it <laughs> but yeah <laughs> makes complete sense but yeah you're a case by case basis i suppose it's not it. yeah um another question we've had here from nicola do you wax the whole face are there any areas you avoid i suppose with waxing uh, for men we wouldn't advise it i know that there are some salons that do um we just wouldn't advise it because of the healing process that that would have to go through because as soon as you get into the thick beard part of a, a guy's face the the hair changes it's 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 very very th you know you, you'll feel it when the, the stubble's through it's very very thick it's very the the, the hair folks are very very large therefore there's a lot more healing time um and then that just opens that up to um infection really uh, it's be sore as well, really, really sore. <laughs> so yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't advise it, and we do turn away people. The only time we don't turn away folk is if they're going through hormone therapy, um, and it's becoming a lot lighter. But it has to cut. It has to start becoming a lot lighter. So they are advised to shave until you know it's fluffy enough almost that we can then start waxing it. But even that first wax after, you know, the, the first wax that we, we do do, it does quite, kind of bleed quite a lot and stuff. So you have to be very confident, very careful and, and, and make sure that the client knows everything that can happen with it. Absolutely. Um, this sort of relates to another question that we've got here from Hema, which is um, after waxing, if men get animal on their face, what sort of treatment do you do? So I suppose if you're not waxing the beard area, it wouldn't be so much of an issue. But if somebody came to you having had that area waxed and they have got ingrown hairs and, and that sort of issue. What I wouldn't wax it further. I would treat the ingrown hairs first then. Um, and I would treat it with something that's quite active. As I said before, try to find a product that you like, that you've tried and tested. Uh, and that you know has results um, and that's normally something with a, an active ingredient uh, such as like salicylic acid or, or glycolic acid it's something that breaks down the skin surface enough for the hair to come through um, but yeah but before opening up and taking away more hairs which could potentially lead to more ingrowns if somebody has an ingrown problem no matter whether it's in the face or not I would definitely try and treat the, the problem first before waxing 
Fantastic, thank you. Probably time for a couple more quick questions. Um, another one we've got here from Ben. Um, I've heard about potential drawbacks of nasal waxing. Some therapists don't like to offer it. Have you got any thoughts or comments on that? Yes, it, the only time that... Please, daddy, daddy. It's five <laughs> o'clock. <laughs> See, we've got a guest appearance. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Um, the, oh, God, I'm going to kill him. He knows that I'm doing this. So the nostril waxing, all I would say is that if somebody's had a bad experience, it, it's probably down to um, it, it's it's probably down to poor technique. Um, you're probably putting the wax up too far, the spatula up too far, so it can hurt. You know, it can hurt the client um, when the wax starts to set if it's up too far. Um, so it is all about just the kind of the nasal passage, almost just around about where you can see. And it's about not really going hell for leather with a spatula up the nostril. Excellent. Um, we've had loads of really nice comments as well as questions then, which is great. Um, oh, good. <laughs> I think my students are now learning the mail unit and some are watching the webinar. So thanks for this. It's been great to let them give them some extra advice. So that's fantastic to hear. Oh, good. Um, I think we've just got one last question here from Maya, which is how do you reassure men that you'll take care of them throughout the whole treatment? I suppose if you have a nervous client, if they're perhaps new to waxing, I think then I would take more time in the consultation before you get um, before you get any clothes off before you get anything. As I say, just take the time in the consultation, ask them what their fear is, um, and then turn that around uh, and you know and just explain to them the the experience that you have, and not just about the experience that you have, but about the confidence that you have in your own waxing. Um, that there's nothing. There's nothing more comforting than hearing somebody that you, because you've got to remember that they already trust you if they've come through the door to a certain degree, that you know they've chosen you out of whoever else they've looked at. So there's something about you that makes them feel more comfortable. So going with that and saying to them, you know, I am one of the best waxers around here, um, and there's a way that you can say it that will just make them feel more comfortable. Um, we are always picking ourselves up. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so important, isn't it? Just reassuring clients that you are the expert, you've done your training, you know what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Confidence. Absolutely. Well, I think that's pretty much what we've got time for, but thank you so much, Kerry. I think it's been really welcome. great comments and it's been fantastic to have your input. Thank that's you. Fine. Thank you very much. And thanks everyone for, for watching. Um, yeah, if you've uh, missed any of our other webinars, you can see them all over on our YouTube page. Um, and also you can claim CPD points for any webinars you're watching if you go to professionalbeauty.co.uk and click on our webinar tab. And we'll see you all soon for the next webinar. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>